ho ho ho, Merry Christmas, all that stuff. Now, Christmas, Christmas ideas. I do this every year. Um, I think Top Gear said it really well one year, where they said, if you have a friend who likes Porsches, they want a Porsche. They don't want an apron that says Porsche on it. And it's, it's a popular <clears throat> um, thing to fall into. People might want a Norworld canopy, they don't want a Norworld t-shirt. So um, my aim here is to show you some real winners of Christmas gifts and some absolute fails. This is camping and four wheel driving and cooking. So it's a bit of everything in here. Uh, nothing in this is sponsored. I don't talk to any of these brands beforehand. These are just things that I think would be good gift ideas. So again, <clears throat> no, I'm not being paid to say any of this. Although I have been offered quite a lot of money to say things on this list, I just don't accept it. Down below in the video description, there are links to everything that I've mentioned in this video. So you can click on those and go and find the things very easily. Okay, it's my morning coffee, by the way. First, the mat I'm standing on. It's like the people at Sea Gear had a meeting and they went, you know that bloke cooks all right food, makes bad jokes, bit beardy, drives a soccer mum car. You, you know him? Fire to fork, yeah. What do you reckon he needs? <clears throat> and they went, a mat that fits perfectly around a wagon with a 270 degree awning. And that's exactly what this is. So these sea gear mats are, I've been using them for years on the camper and stuff. They are a mat that you can drop sand onto, onto one side and it will run through, but it will not let sand up through. So they're great, great for beaches. I just use them everywhere because I've got two little kids and it's just great to have a clean environment where you're camping. One in the camper is fantastic because it's sort of nearly six meters long by two and a half meters wide. It's exactly the same size as the awning. And this fits my car perfectly. I can't believe how nice this is to use. Uh, it also gives you a perfect parking spot if you do take your car away and we're back back in. It's um, very impressed. And about to go down to down south and use it on the beach. And I'm keen to try that out. But yeah, uh, they are not a cheap item, but they are a very good item. Next. These little guys, we've got two of them. They are little lanterns from Bare Bones. And you twist the top to turn them on. This is like a nice copper finish. They are perfectly bright enough at night for like a nice ambient light. I'd probably want a couple of them to cook under, but we also use them as a night light, really, really um, dimmed. So they're dimmable at the top. Um, in, inside the camp trailer, they last quite a long time and they're really easy to charge because they've just got a little built-in um, and they've got a little built-in USB that just curls under here. Yeah, um, I just think they look cool. And they're easier to store because I just clip them inside my car on the back of a seat. And uh, yeah, nicer than your kind of your generic ones. They just add a little bit of ambience. So yeah, particularly for people who like quite a stylish camp setup, they're great. Next, let's talk about chairs. This is my favorite single person chair. So this is a, an Oztent King Goanna. Yep. And I've got the hotspot version, which means the back is warmed. It's got these like reusable heat pads that you basically just, this one's been used. Um, you put that in boiling water and it resets. Um, and then when you want it hot, you just click this little thing at the top and it will get hot. And it warms your back. It's got two heat pads in the back of it. Great if you, uh, married to a lizard like I am, or just in a really cold environment. We love them in Tassie. They would have been great in the Vic High Country. Very good things. They are quite a heavy chair, but I kind of like that in some scenarios. So like, I like a light chair when I'm tight in space. I like a heavy chair for comfort. It feels robust, uh, but more than anything, I've got a pretty bad back. Well, not, I've actually got an okay back, but I did break it. Um, so I've got to be careful with it. It has arch support. So it's got these big adjustable straps on the back. Um, and that make, makes it, as far as I'm concerned, the most comfortable chair on the market. Um, they're just great. Now, what do I bring most of the time? I have a family. So most of the time, I actually just bring one of these couches. This is an Oztrail three-seater. Uh, I just bought this from Snowy's. This is my third, because I've lost one, and one of them is just completely worn out after a few years of use. Um, you see, they fold up to about one and a half times the size of a chair, and they pop out to quite bloody big. Fred, come on, on the couch. So, two people and a dog or a kid or whatever, uh, or just lay down and have a nap. Come on, drop. They are really, really good. Um, 
I lent a mate a few of my chairs because I've got lots and he came back and just went, ah, oh, I bought two couches. So yeah, most of my friends have them now. Uh, and I think they're 130 bucks. So not too bad for a three seater. Isn't it Fred, isn't it? Okay, the Osbry Mini Bry. I've had a compact bry for years and I found it, found it really useful. It's a very good bit of kit. Um, they are my favorite fire pit to cook on just because they've got the infinite adjustment. I love the way the, the grill swings away. Now you can put spits on them and stuff. This one is about, it feels about 30% smaller and it's quite a big difference. So the other one comes out to about here. Um, I've actually found myself reaching for the mini brine more than the compact brine. I didn't think that would be the case because you look at it on paper and you go, well, why wouldn't I want the bigger one where I can fit two pots and pans and have more room and it's only, it's only like a couple of kilos heavier or something and it's not very much price difference. Why would I get the small one? Well, you get the small one because it's much nicer to travel with. It also puts out more heat. So I didn't think I'd love it and then I used it and yeah, I reached for this one for more. So I reckon for one or two people, this is a better setup than the compact. Uh, for two or more, uh, the, the compact briar is a really, really good thing. I mean, you, can't, you really can't go wrong with either. If you like a big fire, if you want to cook lots of things at once, definitely get the compact. But if you just want to do like a roast on, the, on this, and what most people do is do their rice or pasta or something like that on a gas burner, yeah, the, the mini is absolutely for you. Put your protein on this, put your, um, your, gas, your, uh, your carbs on something else and it's, it's really good. Um, <clears throat> it also, the grill fits the travel bry perfectly on top. Next, a simple duffel bag. I think people underestimate how useful it is having a waterproof and <clears throat> this is not dustproof or waterproof, but like water resistant. Something can leave out in the roof, let's leave it on your roof, leave out in the rain a little bit. Duffel bag for your clothes. This is the exact one that I use from Cape York to Tassie. Um, it's seen some stuff in the Delica because I, what I do is I fly in with my suitcase. I'd empty all the stuff into the, out of the suitcase into this and then leave the suitcase somewhere, um, usually <clears throat> in a different state because it was bulky and annoying and this is just really convenient. Um, I've also got a crash pad one, which is a bit more expensive and that's like a canvas outer PVC inner. Whatever you do, just make sure it's got PVC in it. That's the important bit. This is a Kelmat one, um, <clears throat> which is all PVC and a lot lighter and cheaper. Um, not lighter duty, I just mean lighter because it doesn't have canvas on the outside. Um, both are really, really good options. Um, these are Australian made, you can get a whole bunch of different sizes. They're, yeah, they're, they're a very good unit. It's so much better than having a suitcase or a backpack or something like that. Having something like this, you can throw in a trailer, throw in a ute tray, throw in, throw in your roof, um, or just leave outside next to your swag and not worry about it. Now, I know some of you are gonna be wanting some kid tips, so here it is. Just got the one. This is the best camping chair for little, little kids that I can find. Most of them have a soft, a soft plate. Fred, steady. Most of them have a soft um, uh, eating area and that just doesn't work with little kids. This one is from Kmart and it's 20 bucks. And it's got a hard eating area. It clicks on. My kids love it. Billy just squeezes in there. <clears throat> he wants to sit in it, he wants to eat in it. He feels like he's part of the crew because he's sitting on his own chair um, and it's just been fantastic. Much better than eating on the ground. And thankfully I have a well-trained dog who doesn't steal food off it amazingly. But yeah, these things are great. Don't, want it, don't bother with the expensive name brand ones. The Kmart ones last really well. Great for a baby shower or something for people whose kids who want to take their kids camping. Next, I picked this one up from Barbecues Galore on the way out to do that ultimate uh, tomahawk because I just realized that I didn't have a good meat thermometer. And I've always seen these things. They're called a meter, M-E-A-T-E-R. And they are a little temperature probe that um, goes into the meat, tells you the internal temperature, tells you the external temperature, and then you can program it. So you just go, okay, I'm cooking a tomahawk steak, a ribeye steak. Um, I want it to be 53 degrees internal. It will tell you, based on the external temperature, how long you need to leave that piece of meat on. It'll constantly adjust. So it'll go, okay, cool, you've got 40 minutes left. If you keep it consistent like this, um, 
and then take it off and you need to rest it for 10 minutes and blah, 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 blah. It tells you everything to do and you, it's completely idiot proof. It really does take the guesswork out. This was expensive. I think it was, I'm just gonna check actually, 200 bucks. It's an expensive little thing. So that's rechargeable. It sits in this little case and recharges. Um, but if you do a lot of expensive cuts like I do, that's worth its money. Now something I'd also like to say is you don't need to go and spend $200 on a stabby thing for a piece of meat. You don't need to spend any money. I don't think Christmas should be about commercialization and I know that I'm giving ideas for products because most people do buy something for their loved ones. However, there's more than one way to show your love uh, and that is through acts of service. Make vouchers. Make a voucher that says, oh, dad, I'll clean your car. You know, one detail by Jimmy, um, valid for 12 months. <clears throat> Mum, I'll give you a foot massage. Um, you know, I will make you dinner for three nights at camp. I will get you drinks all weekend. I will, something like that. Something's not gonna cost you anything or cost you very little, um, but is a huge act of, of service, an, an act of effort. So if you're a bit, a bit tight on coin, do something like that. I think it's a really nice thing to do. I personally would find that really, really valuable. Um, but also, when you are doing it, quick tip is um, make sure that it's something that that person would actually accept from you. So um, if you know that your mum would never let you cook or something, don't do that. Uh, or if you know that your wife would never make you go and detail the car for six hours, um, don't do that. Make sure it's something that they will actually happily accept. Like, oh yeah, 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 all right, all right. You can get drinks all weekend, perfect. You know, something, you, you gotta balance that. Just make sure you check the relationship. So think about the relationship before you do it. I know because I've given one and it just never got called on. Another light. So this one is a telescopic one. It's an Iron Man brand, but basically everyone sells them. They're obviously just like a semi-generic product um, that people put their own label on. It's got a little stake that goes in the ground. And then this, three and a half thousand lumen LED, spikes, you put that into the spike and it goes up really far. Uh, I think it's like three meters. It's like taller than my camper trailer. And it gives a fantastic light. It's just this big general light. It doesn't look like it's it put out much. It puts out a really, really good general light. Just plugs in the cigarette lighter um, and doesn't use much power at all. And it's got a little remote to control it. Um, they are about, this was about a hundred bucks um, and I use it whenever we are camping with a group just to give a really nice gentle ambient light for when we're cooking and preparing things and particularly for setting up I really like it um, and then you can dim it so you can have bugger all light just particularly you've got kids running around and stuff like that it's nice for them to be able to find their way around and not step on things and be able to go to the toilet and things. Um, and yeah, it folds up pretty small. The bag is big enough, which I love. Yeah, that comes with me everywhere. That's, that's been good. Now, we all know where camping cutlery comes from. It comes from the drawer of your old cutlery and then you could buy a new cutlery for your house. But if you do have someone who wants something a, bit, a little bit nicer, I've gone for this bare bones stuff and it's this beautiful quality stainless steel cutlery that feels kind of fancy. But I really like the knives. The butter knives are really good. They've actually got quite a bit of um, sharpness on them. Um, and there's, I don't know, there's just, there's just this brush stainless. They feel a bit more gourmet, but they're also kind of rugged. So yeah, I'm, I like that. Uh, and the other thing to go with them <coughs> is Victrinox make these folding steak knives. If you've ever used one of the Victorinox steak knives, you know that they are like razors. But a folding one, so that when it's in the drawer, it doesn't get blunt, banging around on all the other things. I love this. I've got five of them now, and just steak dinners and stuff, or just, just honestly, I reach for this knife so often, just as a general utility knife. They are very good. A set of those, for someone who camps, is great, because they won't get ruined, and they will be used so much. Next, it helped me out a little bit. Merch, books, I've got those beautiful jar of breadboards, got cups, I've got all kinds of things. Uh, that really helps me out. But also, I don't only sell quality stuff. There's no cheap stuff on my store. Those breadboards are handmade and yelling up. 
Um, they are Jarrah, they're beautiful. The clothes are all good quality. The book, I think, is good quality. So yeah, jump on there, grab something. There are some nice things in there, I think. Um, and it definitely goes a long way to making this channel sustainable. Speaking of which, I never ask people to subscribe, ever. Like, I haven't done it in four years. I would love you to actually hit subscribe. If you find these videos useful, if you've watched more than one, I think, is, should be the rule of thumb. If you've watched more than one and you found something useful, whether it's a recipe or a guide or whatever, I'd love you to hit subscribe. I'm so close to the 100K, and if you could get me that 100K play button from YouTube for Christmas, I'd really like that, so thank you. This thing, this is a hibachi grill. I've cooked lots of things on this. In fact, we cook all of our steaks at home on this. We cook any Japanese food basically goes on this. Uh, I'm gonna be using it today to make yakitori. It's a charcoal or wood grill. It's got a little drawer underneath that you can use as an oven. They are a fantastic thing. They're made in Perth. Um, they are on the expensive side. So this is for, you know, people who wanna spend a bit more money, but this is cause it's a, like it's a handmade item. On the outside it's corton, so this will get a beautiful rust patina on the outside, but will seal. Um, and everything inside that touches food is stainless steel. So everything's food grade, everything is beautifully made. I mean, the quality of these things is out of control. Um, <clears throat> they've got a couple of different sizes. I actually personally prefer the smaller one. I've got both, and I prefer the smaller one because it's more portable. I carry it around, I use this in the middle of a table um, to cook things. It's a really good way of doing dinner in a show. Um, so for our friends over, we'll do all the side dishes. All right, come outside, we're gonna eat dinner outside, come and have some steaks, and I'll cook the steaks for them in front of them on this, and it's great fun. So yeah, um, Firemate is the brand. Uh, you gotta get in touch with him directly through, he's got a website now, um, but yeah, Perth guy, you can go and pick it up in, in South Perth. A multi-tool, or a Leatherman. Um, I've got a Victorinox one and I've got a Leatherman one. Um, I find this is a nice lightweight one. I find the pliers on this to be excellent, um, on the Victorinox one. Um, uh, I find the knives to be really good on the Leatherman one. It, just go and have a play with them, see which one you like. Um, I usually reach for this, um, although this is very nice. This is what the Australian Army uses, actually, the Victorinox. Um, since getting one and having it in my car, I find myself reaching for this more than anything else. Um, I really missed it on one trip on the Delica, and I really just felt naked without it. Whenever I go overseas, whenever I go interstate, this is the first thing that gets packed in my check-in luggage. This is <clears throat> when you've got a buggered zip, when you just need to cut that tag off something, when you need to unscrew something to get the batteries out. These things are worth their weight in gold. I carry them everywhere we travel, and there's never been a trip where I didn't use it. Now, knives. Uh, I've got the full set of Osbrey knives. You can buy that if you want. It's not a cheap investment, but it is very good in the leather roll and everything. Now, I wanna talk about which ones are my favorites. Number one, the cleaver. You have seen this in countless of my episodes. I use it all the time. Number two, the petty. Um, this is my most used at home, and I'd say equally most used in the bush. It's for cutting up little, um, anything little, garlic, onion, um, ginger, anything like that. These things are so good, but also they're stainless, so you can leave them wet, which you can't with the high carbon steel. So to just quickly cut that tomato or cut that bit of fruit or something, I'm always reaching for this because I'd, I'd, I'd have to take less care of it, basically. And then finally, my new favorite, <clears throat> as in just the thing that I've discovered, and, and I don't know why I didn't use it earlier, is a, is a filleting knife. Having a filleting knife for cutting meat is unreal, not just for fish. This is anything, you know, big pieces of meat to, to divide it up, even just to slice your steaks. The fact that it has a thin blade, it's also very springy and very strong. Um, you see it's like, it'll really bend for you um, and fling, flick straight back. The fact that it has a thin blade means less drag. If you're trying to cut that, get that cleaver through a giant piece of meat, the sides of it are, what, are what's gripping and making it difficult and you're putting more pressure in than you need to. This thing just glides through anything. It's also stainless so you can use it for fishing. Very, 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 very nice knife. Uh, and if you're a fisho and you already have a bunch of these, sharpen one and put it in your cooking kit. They are so good. Now, think about hitching and unhitching a trailer. What's the worst part of it? and why is it the D-shackles? 
They are fiddly. They get jammed. They're a pain in the ass. I went online and I bought some of these. These are Ost Lift. Uh, no affiliation. Uh, these are just something I bought because they're rated. So that's really important for legalities. I bought these as 2,000 kilo rated uh, hooks with one of these pin things. I can't remember what they're called. Um, anyway, got rid of my D shackles, put this on the back. Now, to hitch my trailer, I just go like this. That's it. Unhitch. Done. Never gets jammed, never gets stuck. Takes one second. These were not expensive and they have changed my life. They are really, really, really good things. Now, when you are specking them, make sure you don't, it's like, it's like it's hardly any more, hardly any extra money to go for a three and a half ton. Don't do that if you've got a lighter trailer. You want these to be correctly specced for your trailer. So, you know, within sort of a few hundred kilos. Um, this is a nine, this is spec to 1920, this trailer, 1920 kilos. So there's a 2000 kilo rated um, hooks. Because if you do roll, I've got an articulating hitch that will just spin. So I want the trailer to roll not the car. So I want these to snap off in, in that sort of situation. That's what they're designed for. They're designed to snap under load. And that's really, really important. It'll catch the trailer if it's unhitched, but it will not flip your car if the trailer rolls. So very good things. On the topic of shackles, soft shackles. Now, most people have recovery kits if they go four-wheel driving a lot and upgrading their metal shackles to soft shackles these things don't weigh anything. That's just, it's just like a nothing. Uh, they're easy to store. They are much safer. This was actually my wife's suggestion. She goes, what about those soft shackle things? I love them because the bag's so much lighter now. You can get the lighter duty ones, the heavier duty ones. These are called a fuse shackle from Max Tracks. The idea of these is that they are a breaking point and this is a big gnarly one. I, I even replaced my winch hook with one because my winch hook was banging around and getting in the way and I was like well why not just have one of these. So um, these are a great thing because they'll fit with anyone's recovery kit. So yeah I, I definitely recommend some of these. Just think of it. A life without D shackles. What a wonderful life. All right let's get into the crap ones. All right I jumped on my Instagram and I asked people to send in their worst Christmas gifts that they've received. If you are on Instagram, jump on and follow me. That's where I'm the most active. So there's a lot of interaction in there. You'll get all the behind the scenes stuff. Okay. Um, uh, $5 collapsible kettle, the burns. Yeah, don't buy people cheap collapsible kettles. They collapse really easily. Um, my dad bought my mum a second battery cover for his car, but turns out it's for the wrong side. Yeah, that's, yeah, don't buy presents for yourself. Several times the Shiwi is mentioned. My wife actually tested one of those. She's got an Instagram page called Ladies in the Camp, and it's three women who go camping a lot. And they tested a couple of different brands. And without going into too much detail, the Shiwi is rigid and it doesn't, shall we say, fit every shape. Um, it's like it's a, it's a rigid funnel. It makes no sense. It should be silicon and so that it will get a seal. Yeah, not, not good things. Uh, the single use bar heat bead barbecues and foil trays, they are shocking, absolutely shocking. Oh, the, this is my favorite and a real, uh, something that I've experienced many times is one of those credit card size multi-tools. They are rubbish, nothing in them works well. Um, in fact, just really cheap multi-tools in general suck. Get a Leatherman, get a Victorinox, get something, get a Gerber whatever you need to do, but get a good one. Don't get a cheap one, they suck. Uh, the egg carriers, which are the hard plastic egg carriers, for some reason they're usually yellow. Um, they are just, they should just be called egg, egg breakers. Eggs come in cardboard, leave them in cardboard. Cardboard is soft, it fits around the egg. Putting them in a hard plastic thing where they can bang around and crack is shocking, especially if you buy anything bigger than the smallest eggs in the world. Offer a Crusader, a cookbook. Yeah, it's a terrible gift. Don't, don't get anyone that's awful. Thanks Pete from WA Camping Adventures. He's also said that. <coughs> Taylor from Outdoors Adventures. Uh, lawn aerator sandals, they are. That's pretty average. Oh, cheap lights. Very popular one, cheap lights. And particularly, I find, cheap lights that require like AA batteries or you know replaceable batteries. I hate that. Come on, it's 2023, rechargeable. Get rechargeable stuff. Like, yeah, no. 
Oh, also really common, 12 volt kettles. They are terrible and dangerous. They will burn your car down and they take, honestly, they take like 25 minutes to get hot and they use heaps of power. You are better off buying a pop-up brand um, 240 volt, 1000 watt kettle and plug into your inverter. They actually work. They take about three minutes. They draw like 100 amps, uh, which is a lot, but only for three minutes. So it's actually very little overall draw on the battery. Oh, cheap Bunnings chairs? No, don't ever buy someone cheap chairs. They are just rubbish. Anything Adventure Kings? Oh, I'm not gonna go into that. Um, Coronas. Yeah, don't buy people Coronas, buy them nice beers. Get them some CB Co's or some, you know, something fancy. Actually, there's a, there's a, no affiliation, but there's a, um, actually there are a bunch of them. One of the best gifts I've ever received is from a company called Man Flowers. And it was basically just like beef jerky and beers and I was feeling pretty down in the dumps and my wife was away and she sent me man flowers and it made my day. I was so stoked. So um, yeah, do something like that. That's it's really nice. You can also get subscriptions for different craft beers and things like that. They're, that's a, a really good gift idea. And I'd like to finish it with basically anything that is the merch version of the thing you actually want. Help the person buy the thing they actually want don't buy merch of it, um, unless it's a YouTube channel or something, or a band, or, I, I get that, you can buy merch of that, because you can't buy, yeah, anyway. Um, thank you so much for watching, I'll see you in the next one, hopefully that was useful, and have a bloody good Christmas. Cheers.